as we start off in our Believer's Authority series, uh, for those who missed any of the series before earlier this year, you can always go to the media stand and they can avail you of the messages or you go to our Facebook page or our Telegram channel to listen. Luke chapter 10 verse 19. Behold, I give you the authority to trample on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Hallelujah, somebody. Let's read together. One to go. Behold, I give you the authority to trample up. Everybody want to go. Let's read together. Want to go. And pull upon serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you. And I like verse 20. It says, nevertheless, do not rejoice in this, that the spirits are subject to you. He said, but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. Now, why I like that scripture is because, you know, here we believe strongly that we have been given the gospel of Christ, not the gospel of Satan. Amen? Uh, you didn't get it. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Some people preach more about Satan than Jesus. Because every time they are so focused on what is not working, they are so focused on the evil. No. We have been called to preach the good news of salvation. Glory be to God. So, in these two scriptures here, Jesus is showing you what you need to focus on. He is saying that, yes, you have authority over Satan, and which we will be discussing, and we need to understand our authority, but he says, nevertheless, do not rejoice because you have authority. Meaning, it is a, it's a normal thing. Glory be to God. Hey, glory be to God. Hallelujah. That what you should be rejoicing about is that your names are written in heaven. What that means is that, that you are a bona fide, registered child of God. Glory be to God. Say it if you believe it. Say, I'm a bona fide, a bona fide. Registered, registered citizen of heaven. heaven. Some of you can't say it, but say it well. I'm a bona fide, a bona fide registered, registered citizen, of heaven. citizen of heaven. So I am not going to make heaven. I am a citizen of where? Heaven. Praise God. And I'm ambassador of Christ that has been sent here to depict the kingdom system in heaven here on earth. So when we say, thy kingdom come, what we are saying is that the system of heaven is replicated here on earth. Glory be to God, somebody. So God is expecting that you and I as believers will replicate the kingdom system, the way they think, the way they operate in heaven, we will duplicate and replicate it here. So you are a kingdom replicator. Say with me, I'm a kingdom replicator. A kingdom replicator. So when we're looking at the believer's authority, we are talking about delegated power. As a kingdom replicator, as a kingdom ambassador, you cannot fulfill your duties without authority. Just like every ambassador on earth, if Nigerian ambassador to America is being sent, he is giving the authority of Nigeria to represent Nigeria in America. And that's why Ambassadors have what we call diplomatic immunity. Meaning that you can't arrest an ambassador. You can't, you know, um, is given special privileges because not of his person. You may not like the way he looks. It may be very short. It may be very fat, whatever it is. But as long as he is the ambassador of that country, if you go against him, you are going against the whole country. 
Hey, glory be to God. If they touch you, they are touching all of heaven. Hey, hey, glory be to God. Are you getting what I'm saying right now? If, they, if the enemy tries to attack you, the enemy is trying to attack the whole kingdom of heaven. So you must understand who you are in Christ Jesus. And you must understand the authority that you carry. He says, I have given. This is verse 19. Behold, I give you, I have given. Authority is delegated power. Authority is not just power. Power, with power, you have to use force. You know, like those agberos. Glory be to God. That's how I call it in English, agberos. Praise the Lord. <laughs> will it change it? Will it change it? Will it change it? Because they don't have authority, they have to use force. That's why they are forcing you to bring the money. Glory be to God. Are you getting it now? They are very forceful. They show a lot of power because they don't, no, no government authority, no government organization is backing them up. They are just a private, they are just private people doing stuff. It would be strange to see, well, in Nigeria, it may not be strange. Let me just put that caveat there, praise the Lord. <laughs> but it may be strange to see, you know, somebody in a government, uh, like the Boss, uh, the BRT that we have. It will be strange to see the person shouting like that. I put my caveat. It's Nigeria, so you may see. Praise the Lord. <laughs> but it, most times they are more organized. They sit down, they are cool, they are giving you a card. You see the difference? Because they have authority from the government to do what they are doing. The reason why most believers are yet to walk in the fullness of God's plan for their life is because they're yet to understand the authority that they have in God. And so they want to use power to get everything. Meanwhile, they are ignorant of the fact that you have the authority already. Say, I have the authority already. To trample on serpents and scorpions. Those, that word serpent and scorpions there is symbolic of the devil and his demons. So you have the authority that is delegated power to trample on the devil, his demons, and every power of the enemy. So whether they call it from your village, whether they call it from your father's house, whether they call it from your mother's house, I have good news this morning. I say you have authority over all of them. Amen? Amen? Don't get scared to travel home to the village. Uh, last week I was opportune to be back in the village for a burial. I you know when you get to the village, like, they like, you know, Africans like hugging a lot. Every small table hugging you, hugging. Yeah. And some people get scared because when they go and they start hugging, that people will touch them. And when they touch them, something will happen. Don't disgrace us now. Praise the Lord. <laughs> the only reason why, see, you can have authority and not know you have it. And because of that, you will suffer. So it is not that the devil is powerful. The devil is just corny enough to know that you are ignorant of what you possess. So I always tell people, I say, ah, when they say, I'll be very careful, you're going home, oh, 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 I say, well, you need to advise them. It's not me you advise, it's the people that want to try themselves you should be advising. Because I'm carrying the authority of heaven. Glory be to God. And nothing shall by any means hurt me. Glory be to God. You say, Pastor, how can you speak like this? I'm speaking on the authority of the word of God. Everything on this earth was created, framed by the word of God, Hebrews 11, 3. And so if you are a human being that exists in this world, that means this word created you. And this word is telling me that I have authority. Glory be to God. Say, I have authority. Say, Lord, I have authority. You must come to this understanding. 
The centurion man in the Bible had, had this understanding. That's why he told Jesus, don't worry coming to my house. Why are you coming to my house? For what? Just speak the word. He said, I know. He said, when I tell one to go, they go. Amen. 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 I think here, some weeks ago, maybe when we were talking about choosing a life partner, I gave you the hierarchy in the spirit. Who remembers that? Who remembers? Who remembers? I told you why you should not marry someone that's not born again is because they are beneath you in the spirit. So the, in the hierarchy is who? First is who? God the Father. The Godhead, right? And who is next? Believers, we, right? Because we are seated with Christ in what? Heavenly place. We are joint heads with who? Christ. Then who is next? Angels. He has made us, you know, angels a little lower than us. And angels are ministering to us. Hallelujah, somebody. Hallelujah. And after the angels, who? The devil and his demons. The after the devil and his demons, who? The unbeliever. <laughs> Glory be to God. In the spirit, oh, that's the hierarchy. Oh. So how can a believer live where you are to go and be married your unbeliever down? You are just giving yourself a problem. Now, that was for choosing life path. Now, in this case, that's the same way, authority. Glory be to God. Say, I have authority. So, the centurion understood the authority they had. Now, you can't see a policeman, for example, um, trying to stop a car. Have you seen it before? Again, any example I'm giving, Nigeria is an exception. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Nigeria is just a beautiful country. Now, but typically, you can see a very short policeman on uniform, right? And he just does his hand like this. And when, what happens on the road if he's, uh, um, if he's in charge of the traffic? What happens when he does like this? Every car stops, right? Even big trailer will do what? Again, not in Nigeria. Praise the Lord. <laughs> the trailer can clear the guy. <laughs> But in any sane society that we are becoming by God's grace, a short policeman, because he is a man in authority, can raise his hand up and everybody will obey. If he doesn't wear his symbol of authority, which is uniform, and you just wear singlet and you go to the road and you do like this, what will happen to you? Everyone here will have a early visitor. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Why? Because you, as you were driving, you did not see the symbol of authority. So you must understand that you have authority and then you must put on the symbols of authority in your life. One of the symbols of authority is the name of Jesus. Glory be to God. It's not just to call it. Calling it is part of it, but it's, not to, call. it's, to, it's to understand and be conscious of it. That I come in the name of Jesus. Meaning I come representing the power of his resurrection in this matter. One of the symbols of authority is the blood of Jesus. That blood that was shed that gave us access to God the Father. And now gives us authority over the earth. Say, I have authority. Say, like, I have authority. Colossians 2.15. We see very clearly that Christ defeated the enemy. Bible says, and he made a public spectacle of him. Christ defeated the enemy on your behalf. So when he was defeating the enemy, you were defeating the enemy. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. You see, I am <sighs> 
When you are ignorant of the authority you have in Christ, you will suffer. You will suffer. Glory be to God. You will suffer because you don't know your rights and privileges. There was a man who was on a boat, uh, a, a ship, not boat, now a very big eh? cruise ship. In the very, those days, when they used to use only ship, so they didn't have a airplane or so that much or something like that. So. And so he, he was able to save money for a ticket and he got on the ship. And it's so that everybody, as time goes on, every day people just go to the dining, the dining area to go and eat. But he didn't have money. So he said he doesn't have money to buy food. So he would just stay where he is and be eating the biscuits that he bought. First week went, second week went. But now he was running out of the biscuit. So one day somebody just saw him and said, ah, why? I've never really seen you come to the dining room to eat. What's happening? I say he doesn't have enough money to pay for it. Say, ah, the food is part of what you paid for for the trip. Say, ah, and I've missed for two weeks. I think the, the voyage was about three weeks. He said, ah, he said, what I didn't eat this third week. Say, this third week. But in fact, the dining room became his own room. Praise the Lord. <laughs> you can laugh at the guy, but that's what some of us are going through. We don't know what has been paid for. So I'm here to tell you that your divine health has been paid for. Your divine prosperity has been paid for. Your freedom has been bought with his precious blood. Say thank you, Jesus, for authority. You don't have authority over another human being. Let me say that now. Because when we teach believe authority, people think that ah, I have authority, so I have authority over everybody. No, of course, in the context of different organizations or the context of the family, there is a governance framework or structure that operates. But generally, you are not called to manipulate anybody. The authority we are talking about is that you have authority over what? Serpent, which is the devil. And scorpions is demons. What did I say? Say, I have authority over the devil and his demons. And anybody in that network, the ogre of the evil network is the devil. Glory be to God. So, one small witch in your neighborhood, one small wizard, what again? Which other one? Which other one now? You watch Nollywood movie a lot. Village people, wicked mother-in-law, and all the things. Amen? I heard of a story. I don't know how true it is, but it's a story I heard some, some, some years ago of a, a young man whose mother was a witch. So among the four witches, they had planned that they would kill their children. So they had killed... The first one, second one, and the third one. Killed and eating them. Killed in the spirit or whatever. So this one loved her son so much. She didn't want to, she didn't want to offer him to the four, the three other, the coven. So she now told the son, that, ah, let me confess to you, I'm a witch. And this is the agreement. Give him the, ah, the guy said, really, wow. And the guy was a very wise guy. He didn't act surprised. He said, wow, 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 thank you for telling me. So what we will do is that we'll come in the night. You will see uh, four cockroaches. We'll come like cockroach. I will be the one at the back. Just kill the first three. And leave that. And the one at the back. He said, oh, okay, 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 that's fine. Very sharp boy. didn't argue. When they came, he killed the four. <laughs> He said, so far, not the wish to live. Praise the Lord. <laughs> he said, he killed the first. He said, I will do the burial. It's my mother. Praise the Lord. He said, I have authority. Ephesians 1, quickly. Ephesians 1, verse 20. So whatever it is that you see oppressing you or trying to limit you in any way, you need to stand up and take your place. Ephesians chapter 1. Verse 20 and 21. Are we there? 
Let's shoot together. One to go. Verse 20. One to go. Now, verse 21. Now is far above any ruler or authority or power or leader or anything else. Not only in this world, but also in the world to come. Somebody say hallelujah. Our authority is forever. It says that God raised Christ, that's the much more that raised Christ from the dead, and seated him. So, when you are in authority, you are in a place of honor. You are royalty. Glory be to God. You're not proud, though, but you don't. You carry yourself with that consciousness. Forget that you're entering the bus. It's just a matter of time. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Even in the bus, you have to be conscious of your authority. Amen? Amen. And it says, now he is far above any ruler or authority or power or leader or anything else, create anything. Jesus is far above. And then he said that now we are also seated with him. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. That means we are also far above. What am I saying is, I want you to go into this week and begin to confront everything that is trying to hinder you from manifesting your authority in Christ. Anything. No matter how small it is, no matter how big it is. Confront in the spirit and then begin to take actions of faith to dispense your authority. Someone say hallelujah. hallelujah. I remember one time, go to Ephesians 2 quickly. Let's read Ephesians 2, verse 5 to 6, and then we're going to tie this up. Ephesians 2, 5 and 6. Say, I'm seated with Christ in heavenly places. Ephesians 2, 5 and 6. That even though we were dead because of our sins, he gave us life when he raised Christ from the dead. It is only by God's grace that you have been saved. For he raised us, oh, verse 6, for he raised us from the dead along with Christ and seated us with him. Are you seeing that now? Are you seeing that now? And seated us with him in the heavenly realms because we are united in Christ Jesus. Someone say, I'm seated with Christ. Far above principalities and powers. Say again, I'm seated with Christ. Far above principalities and powers. Say one more time, I'm seated with Christ. Far above principalities and powers. So I'm not helpless. Say, I'm not helpless. I'm not, helpless. I'm not hopeless. I'm, hopeless. I'm, full I'm full of authority. Everything answers to me. Answers to me. Nature answers to me. Answers to me. The economy answers to me. In the name of Jesus. I think I shared at Refuel, one of our respected men of God in this country, uh, Father's the Faith, Reverend Umar Kwai, was building his house one time, and he needed 10 million to complete the house. And so, he didn't have it in the account, but he just woke up in the morning and drove to the bank. And went to the bank and told the bank uh, manager, I need uh, to withdraw 10 million from my account. And the guy was surprised. He checked the account. There's no 10 million. He said, ah, uh, sorry, sir. There is no time. He said, shut up, bear. He said, I will go out into my car. In the next 45 minutes, bring me the 10 million. But he was confused. So he said, okay. And he went to his car and was just praying. And was in the car. In 45 minutes, the bank manager ran to him. He was petrified. He was shocked. He said, sir, sir. Uh, the, the, the money is, they say, hey, why are you shouting? Calm down. Glory be to God. <laughs> say, I have authority. 
see, you have to grow in this thing. You know? Even in the authority, you, you, as you grow in the revelation of authority, you grow in the manifestation of it. It's, the money came. You like, call it miracle money. Call it anything money. That's your problem. The man needed 10 million naira. It appeared in the account. Glory be to God. Say, so I have authority. I have authority. Say, like, I have authority. I have authority. You can't have authority and be living like somebody that's a pauper. Be living. See, this issue of prosperity is not because of the money itself. No, 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 no. It is that how can you be a prince in this kingdom? And it says that you are a royal priesthood. A chosen generation. And then you will not be able to manifest that authority. It's an insult. Everything answers to me. Says everything answers to me. One time we had a program. And, and we were students, by the way. Let me just tell you now. We were students when we had a program. When we were students. And the money to pay for the venue was 20,000 era. And by the time we were planning for the program, we could raise only 10,000 naira. We could. I think we, all of us, praise the Lord. <laughs> but that was a bit of money then too. But we gathered all the money and I said, don't worry, let's go on the program. The program was two days. And so we paid the first part of the money. And my, my leaders were very worried. They were worried for me. And worried for us. that How will we get the balance of this 10,000 naira? I will not amount to washing plate. Praise the Lord. <laughs> I said, don't worry. Now, I said, don't worry. The money will be sorted. We had the first day of the program, powerful. We didn't still have the money to pay. The second day of the program, as we're running up, my, the financial person came to meet me and said, we don't still have the money, and the program is about to round up. You say, we should not worry. I said, yes, don't worry. The money is coming. Glory be to God. She thought maybe I had somebody I'd talk to that would bring the money for us. Nobody. And then I told her, I said, I'm going forward to run the program. When, as the money is coming, as you're at the back, if it's 1,000, just return 1,000. If it's 2,000, 2,000, like that. She would look at me very dumbfounded, like, I don't understand. Are you sending someone to bring money or what? I said, no, just obey. He said, okay. And so I went forward and I was run. I was not calling for seed. By the way, I was rounding up the program. I made no mention of money. And I'm telling you, this is real. So as I was there in the front, just rounding the program, suddenly at the back, she just put her hand of one. I kept on preaching, she put her hand two. I kept on preaching, she put her hand three. Even her that was raised up her hand, she was even surprised and shocked. But she was just raised up her hand because money was coming in. Glory be to God. <laughs> And then four, and then five, and then six, and then nine, and then ten. And then she came and did like this. Over. So over. Over. Glory be to God. Meaning that we're now even having more than the amount. <laughs> Glory be to God, somebody. <laughs> she told me, I don't know what's happening here. He said, maybe in heaven we'll ask God how this thing came to pass. When you are in authority, you begin to make demands in the spirit. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. So I have authority. Say, so I'm seated with Christ. Far above principalities and powers. No evil can hurt me. Say like you know, no evil can hurt me. One time I used to drive past a place around Yaba, and every time there used to be policemen there. I'm sharing these examples with you. So you know anything, this authority cuts across every area of your life. So I used to pass that place. I think they dropped my wife or something, I don't know. And every time I pass that place. The policemen will always stop me and delay me. Not that I don't have my, I have my papers, I have my license, I have everything, but I didn't just like delay. They would park, park, and when I park, they would waste my time. And so I was, before I was just going through it, I would stop every time. Ah. 
But what they say, ah, hold on, oh, I'm real to you. Glory be to God. I just can't. No, 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 no. I'm a man in authority. I can't be undergoing this rubbish. So that day as I was driving, I was coming with that consciousness that I'm a man in authority. And you can't waste my time. So as I got there, they were about to stop me to sit back. I said, no, no, no. I wind down. I said, come here. Praise the Lord. Not last mile, police. Let me just let you understand. It's not last mile I was talking to. I was talking to police. I said, come here. Huh? They, they that will stop me now, surprise. I said, the two of you, two of you, two of you, come here. <laughs> not just one. Two of you, come here. And one came here, one came here. I went down. I said, what, 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 what's the problem? Don't you know me? They said, sorry, sir. <laughs> I said, what's your own name? I said, what's your own name? I said, don't be disturbing people like us on the road, please. Now, let me pray for you. In the name, I pray for them. I said, sorry, sir. From that day, they never stopped me again. And I said, ah, pastor. <laughs> Glory be to God. I just go up. So why can you disturb me every time, delay me? You will rise up. Amen. As a man in authority. Amen. As a woman in authority. Amen. I said you will rise up. Amen. Quickly, four, thing, four truths you need to note about your authority in Christ. Number one, Christ defeated the devil. We've shared some of this already just to put it in context. Christ defeated the devil. Colossians 2.15 he defeated him, he disarmed him, and, and so when Christ defeated the devil, you also defeated the devil. And that's why you have authority in Christ. Over every work of the devil. So say no to that sickness. Say no to that poverty. Say no to that limitation. Say no to fear. He has not given you the spirit of fear, but the spirit of power, of love, and of a sound mind. Anxiety cannot hinder you. Say, be anxious for nothing. But in everything, give thanks with prayer and supplication to God. Number two, Christ has authority over the devil. Ephesians 1, verse 21 to 23. We've read that before. Christ has authority over the enemy. So God has elevated him and made him to be far above the enemy. Most people want to make God look like God is the one fighting the devil. Like in life, it is God versus the devil. The devil is too small. God created the devil. Amen? In case you didn't know, Bible class 101, God, eh? Now he created the devil. So devil, too small to say now God versus devil. No. In fact, in Bible, one time they say, don't serve mammon. Talking about money. Because God knows that for the average human being on this earth, money can be a very uh, tempting thing. Glory be to God. Number three, we are the body of Christ. We are the body of Christ. First Corinthians 12, verse 12. 1 Corinthians 12, verse 12 to 14. We are the body of Christ. 1 Corinthians 12, verse 12 to 14. The human body has many parts, but the many parts make up one whole body. So it is with the body of Christ. Some of us are Jews, some are Gentiles, some are slaves, some are free. But we have all been baptized into one body by one spirit. And we all share the same spirit. Praise the Lord. So, we are the body of Christ. And so, if Christ is seated far above um, principles and powers, since we are his body, we are also seated. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Second Corinthians 6, verse 14. Second Corinthians 6, Marido shame. Thank you, Lord Jesus. As you go back this week, you're going to go back with authority. Verse 14. 
Don't team up with those who are unbelievers. How can righteousness be a partner with wickedness? How can light live with darkness? Verse 15, what harmony can there be between Christ and the devil? How can a believer be a partner with an unbeliever? Praise the Lord. So he's talking about you being a part of the body of Christ. You are a part of the body of Christ. Always see yourself as part of the body of Christ. Say, I'm, a, I'm part of the body of Christ. Why is it important? Because the more you see yourself in that light, the more you see that nothing that cannot happen to Christ cannot happen to you. Glory be to God. Number four, we have, uh, we have the authority of Christ. We have the authority of Christ. Now we saw that clearly in Ephesians 2, 5, and 6 that we are now seated with him. And in John 14, 12, it says, the works I do, you also shall do, and greater works shall you also do. The reason why you can do greater works is because now you have the authority of Christ. And that's why he said in the Bible that whatever you bind your own head as a royal priesthood, whatever you utter and bound here on earth is bound in heaven. Glory be to God. To so have authority. So I walk in authority. Glory be to God. Where you are, put your hands up and just begin to thank the Lord and just worship him. Thank him for the authority you have in Christ Jesus. Thank him for the authority you have in Christ Jesus. Thank him because you are a man or you are a woman in authority. And from today, you begin to walk in it. And if you're already walking in it, you're going to walk in a deeper dimension of that authority with greater manifestations. Oh, open up your mouth and begin to pray right now, wherever you are. Lando sikrati falando shika bababa. And just perhaps you are here, you are yet to become a member of that body of Christ. You are yet to become born again. You have been in church for a long time, but you're not a member of that body spiritually. I want to give you the opportunity this morning. Wherever you are, put your hand on your chest. It's a symbol of you receiving the life of God. And if you have been born again, but somehow you've just gone far away from God, you want to come back home, also put your hand on your chest. I want to pray for you. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you. Heavenly Father, thank you for these precious ones who are coming today to say they want to become a member of this body. I ask the Lord you will receive them. I ask the Lord you will reveal yourself to them. For those who have strayed away and they are coming today to say they want to come back into this family of God. I ask the Lord you will keep them and you will preserve them. Thank you Heavenly Father. And in that same vein, we thank you for your precious body that was broken for us. Thank you because this bread represents that body. And as that body was broken for us, you paid the ultimate price for us to walk in authority. As we take it today, I pray that everyone here will begin to walk in authority over the enemy and his systems and his plans in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you for the wine. That represents your blood that was shed for us on the cross. I pray for everyone here. As this blood was shed for our freedom and our redemption, I pray that everyone here begins to walk in the liberty Amen. that Christ has delivered to us. Amen. No guilt, no fear, Amen. no anxiety, Amen. walking in full confidence Amen. in the love of God. Thank you, Heavenly Father. 
in Jesus' name. So just um, partake of the table. And as you take it, begin to pray and begin to thank God. It's a new day of authority.